look, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm not going to give you half-assed anything. I'm not going to go on uh, in the book of Revelation if I have a bad attitude about it, uh, if, if I'm not up to it, if I don't embrace the material, even though it's bad material to me, even though it's destruction and doom and death and strangely worded scripture which i think that's part of my problem i honestly do it's it's the wording of it it's the constant hidden the constant pictures i think that part of my frustration is that paul for us lifts the veil uh in fact at the end of i'm thinking as i go here first corinthians uh, chapter 12 this is what we read from from paul this is uh, actually chapter 13, when he speaks of love never lapsing. I'm going to get to the main point here, but I think this is good, and I think this is the problem I'm having. And I hope that as I talk this through, as I talk it out with you here on the show, I can work through it. And then you will understand the problem I'm having. You will see how I'm working through it. And somehow, because we've been together in this now for almost two years, we're going to use this experience to move on. And we're going to admit that nothing is tied up in a neat little package or bow. God is testing and trying us, and he's constantly keeping things away from our grasp that we think we want, that we think we need. We think we have to get, I think I have to get through this book of Revelation at a certain time, a certain number of shows, I don't, I don't, and I don't have to get through it at all. Of course, me, knowing me, who I am, I'm consistent. I want to stay consistent, and I want to finish what I start. It would be a really hard, fe terrible feeling of incompletion if I didn't get through the Revelation series. So I am going to get through it, but nothing says when I have to get through it. So I'm just going to talk this out with you. I'm having issues with the language of the scripture. I'm having issues with the veiled language because we've gone from face-to-face -face revelation that we have with Paul. We've gone from that to hidden, to cryptic. And I was flying along up until chapter 14. It has nothing to do with me being in Florida or me being in a laundry room. It, nothing to do with that at all. I was in a bunker before. I've been in a... I was in the washroom broadcasting. I was broadcasting from my car. I broadcast from an office in another state. I broadcast from all sorts of places. So I don't think it's that. I broadcast from hotel rooms all across the United States. It's not location. It's disposition, my disposition. And it's the lateness of the hour. I'm not talking about the hour of the day, but the hour of the eon. It's, it's the fact that this is very weighty, very serious things we're talking about here. And we're talking about judgment. We're talking about the sickle of God reaping a harvest and blood rising to incredible depths. And we're talking about many, many millions of people dying. I talked to you this about this before with not much problem but we're about to unleash the bowls in revelation which are the worst of the trials and again this stuff is just being spread out but let me take a little relief here and go to paul as he talks about love and this will reach to my point on our face-to-face -face fellowship we have with christ now face-to-face -face fellowship Verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 13, love is never lapsing, yet whether prophecies, they will be discarded. Prophecies. Someone speaks in a mysterious, veiled language of a prophet and tells things to come in the future. But these will be discarded because knowledge will have come. Or languages, they will cease. We'll talk about a veiled revelation Languages speaking in tongues, that will cease. That will cease because it's not even a discernible language. So it served its purpose when the Holy Spirit was making things known to people before the Word of God was completed. 
it was handy, I guess. And it was a manifestation, a miraculous manifestation that God was in the midst of the people, even Paul's people. I say even Paul's people because it was a shock in that day that God would even talk to Gentiles. And maybe as the seven ecclesias who receive the book of Revelation, the unveiling, the scroll, the unveiling of Jesus Christ, they may be a reading of the sickle and the harvest and the grape and the wheat. I'm sick of this Israelite terminology because I'm not an Israelite. So I am, I'm really getting tired of it and I'm going to have to come to a place where I'm comfortable again with explaining something that's not my calling but that is interesting in that we're living in the day it's happening that's one of the things that got me on this in the first place realizing that we had this amazing book the unveiling of jesus christ by a e. knock and it is and we have this amazing book um, but at the same time nobody knows about it and that frustrated me and especially with Islam making such inroads. I knew this was a key component of the end time, so I felt compelled to go through this book. So languages, they will cease. Knowledge, it will be discarded. Uh, this is the gift of knowledge, not knowledge itself, obviously. God gave people special knowledge that other people didn't have in order to finish the revelation, what he had to say to humanity. Paul says, for out of an installment are we knowing, out of an installment are we prophesying. An installment, it's just part of the whole. Out of a part, you might say, we're prophesying. Out of a part, we're knowing. But whenever maturity may be coming, that which is out of an installment, that is out of the part, shall be discarded. When I was a minor, I spoke as a minor. I was disposed as a minor. I took account of things as a minor. Yet when I have become a man, I have discarded that which is a minor's. For at present, we are observing by means of a mirror in an enigma. So Paul's message, remember, went from glory to glory. And he said that at that time he was writing, at the present time he was writing, they were observing him and his people by means of a mirror in an enigma yet then face to face what's then what's the then when maturity may be coming because in this very letter he talks about maturity coming whenever maturity may be coming verse 10 now whenever maturity may be coming that which is out of an installment will be discarded so paul is now looking forward to the day when maturity may be coming and it's at that time, that's the then of verse 12. Yet then, when maturity comes, we'll see face to face. At present, I know out of an installment. Yet then I shall recognize according as I am recognized also. Yet now are remaining faith, expectation, and love. So faith, expectation, and love will exist in the days of maturity. Yet now are remaining faith, expectation of love. From this time forward, from the time of maturity forward, faith, expectation, and love will remain. Yet the greatest of these is love. So we know that from the beginning of this, love is never lapsing. That's where we started in verse 8. Love is never lapsing. So love is a thing that will never go away. Until then, we have faith, expectation, and love in the day of maturity. The important point here is that we are going to recognize in the day of maturity face to face and we're in that day and we're going to recognize as we are recognized also face to face so no more enigmas no more mysteries no more veiled language even though paul as i've lamented to you over the years writes awkwardly and uses uh, words well he didn't use these particular words we're using these are english words but paul used uh, greek words and a enoch did his best to translate them into English and in order to assign each Greek word its own English equivalent he had to stretch the English language because the Greek language is much more detailed and picturesque so no more are we observing things in this enigma state in this mirror state in this um, sort of kind of state where this doesn't mean that this means that this is a parable this is a metaphor this is a figure of speech all these things were constantly 
wrestling with, dealing with in the book of Revelation. And I think that's part of what's frustrating me, which is why I ended yesterday's show mocking God's choice of words in the unveiling of Jesus Christ. And then I apologize to God. I don't mind doing that. Somebody could say, well, Martin, you're justified. What are you doing apologizing to God? I know I'm justified, but I can still, in the relative, feel bad about something and talk to God about it. I'm sorry about that. Why did I do this? I speak to him, you know, as a, as a, as a man with emotions and feelings and problems, desires, frustrations. So we're already in this face-to-face -face realization. And Paul's saying things like, God is the Savior of all humanity, especially of believers, 1 Timothy 4.10. What a great passage that is. God is the Savior of all humanity, especially of believers. You're not going to read that in the unveiling of Jesus Christ. What are you going to read instead? And I perceived and lo, a white cloud, and on the cloud one sitting like a son of, like a son of mankind. Not even the son of mankind. No, no. Like a son of mankind. Everything is like. Well, it's kind of like this, kind of like that. But what is it? You know, kids today, they say like, hey man, it's like we went... I'm like, like, what did you do, man? And he's like, uh, well, we went to my mom's house, man. She's like, what are you guys doing? And I'm like, we're like hungry, man. All this like stuff today, it's ridiculous. So I, the same thing's happening here. One like a son of mankind. Uh, we do not want anyone like the son of mankind. We want the son of mankind himself. And again, the veils, the mirrors, the enigmas, the figures of speech. This is why Paul is so great in that he talks to us directly. All right, now, what I might do, let me know what you think of this. Starting tomorrow, I might just read. This, this might suck. This idea might be terrible. I'm thinking of reading. Now, I rarely do this. I do read sometimes passages from the unveiling of Jesus Christ. I will read a couple lines and then bang, I'm off on my own commentary. Uh, I might start reading like a story time like just like this for, for example if you hate this idea write me and let me know i might turn turn my microphone around kind of face you more and gather around gather around my friends for martin zender's revelation bible hour except it's only 15 minutes because surely that's long enough the two divisions of this temple section of the unveiling one giving us Jehovah's deliverance of faithful Israel and the other detailing his destruction of the apostates, both close with a pair of pictures most graphically presenting their consummation. You know what? I think that idea stinks. And I, I'm, I refuse to do that. That's not fun for me. And if it's not fun for me, it's not going to be fun for you. So I'm going to have to regroup again and see what I'm going to do about this. I might take some time off and run reruns some of my epic shows from the past. And I go back myself and watch some of my shows from the past. And I'm inspired because by that time, I'm so removed from them. And I'm so removed from the fact that I'm the guy doing that, that I really get a kick out of them. And they're so good. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's great truth. And it really helps me through my day, the truth, because the truth is timeless. doesn't matter who it comes through. So maybe I'll run some reruns while I regroup. Maybe that's what needs to happen. Or the other option is I stay with you live. I stay with you and we go off on another topic again. I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm, I'm going to figure it out. But I, I'm going to be fair to you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be good to you. That's I, I really do want to do what's what's best for you. But I have to think of numero uno first. And don't feel bad. I, that, that That's me. I love you as I love myself. I can't love you unless I love myself. And I have to respect myself. I, I have to honor myself, and unless I have my, my self-awareness intact, unless I know oh, my basic needs and understand what I need, I, I can't give anything to you. I have to have leftover. I have to have enough for me and for you. Otherwise, I'm giving you everything I have, and that's stupid. I know people who have given everything they have. I gave everything I had. Why did you do that? Because now you're a shell. Now you're a shell. You gave everything you had. I sold my soul. Why did you do that? Nobody asks you to sell your soul. You can give out of your soul, but you must have an abundance in order to give. Otherwise, you become negated. And that shouldn't happen to any human being. I don't want that to happen. So I'm sure as hell not going to let that happen to me. I like myself too much. People are worried sometimes that I'm going to end my life. Martin, you get into some rough places you get into some uh 
dark spells and they're concerned about me. And I always tell them, look, I amuse myself far too much to kill myself. I've asked God to do it. I, I begged God to take my life before, sure. Uh, but I'm not going to do it to myself. If you're God, come down and yet. Yeah, but he doesn't see the need to do that. He must think I am of further use to him here or of further use to the Hershey company or or something. I don't know. So I, 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 I'm, I, I'm going to keep going one way or the other. Either I'm going to collect for you some uh, classics from the Revelation series, maybe for a week, and then come back uh, better, more refreshed Zender. Or I will think of another topic and forge ahead live with you. I do enjoy talking to you, but uh, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just I've got a big block on the Revelation series right now. So um, let me know what you think. Email me. Um, talk to me. I always enjoy hearing from you. I'm sorry if I'm a little slow with the mail. Uh, between this show and yesterday's show, I might be down to six viewers. I don't know. <laughs> you know I can't control that, can I? It's not about viewers. It's not about how many people watch me. It's not about that at all. Because I do this work as unto the Lord. If there were only two of you, I would still do this show. If I was broadcasting to one person, I'd give it all I got. That's what I do. Uh, so that's God's department, not mine. So listen, go in peace. And you can go in peace because we have an evangel of peace. And um, I will think about things and possibly uh, drink another a glass of wine, and for sure, I'm going to watch uh, Megyn Kelly on Fox News.